Welcome back, Flare community. This video will give you a high-level overview of the Flare network and the key components it consists of. There are many different components working together which make this system. Today, we are going to break them down and find out exactly how they interact with each other. I would like to introduce a diagram I created which represents my personal interpretation of the Flare network. Let's clear the page and start from the beginning. The Flare Time Series Oracle. I often refer to the Flare Time Series Oracle as the heartbeat of the Flare network. It is responsible for processing and outputting data in a decentralized manner at regular intervals. This data represents price pairings of multiple assets to be used within the Flare network. The prices could be US dollars to Spark, XRP, Litecoin, Dogecoin, any asset which is integrated into the Flare network. But where does this data come from, I hear you ask? Well, the input is received from data providers. As the name suggests, data providers provide data. Here are some examples of data providers we know in the community already. The Flare Foundation, Flare Fusion, FTSO EU, FTSO US and Scandi nodes. Data providers have written custom logic to aggregate price information from a number of different sources, for example, exchanges. They are basically trying to calculate the most accurate price for a particular asset. The Flare Time Series Oracle will then receive regular data from all the data providers and process it in a manner which produces an average price for a given asset. As mentioned before, this outputted data is referred to as a time series. The data providers who provide the prices which are closest to the output of the Flare time series oracle will receive a reward which will be paid out in Spark. For more details on the passive income opportunities which can be gained regarding the FTSO and data providers, please feel free to check the video linked above. But where will the data be used? Well, one of the main uses of the data will be within decentralized applications running on the Flare network or DApps for short. Flare Finance is just one example of a company which is building decentralized applications on the Flare network. As a beta tester, I can confirm that you have a lot to look forward to in the coming months. These applications rely on price data to function and can consider it accurate as it has been processed by the Flare Time Series Oracle. Flare Finance is building six applications surrounding decentralized finance, bringing new use cases to assets such as XRP, Litecoin, and Dogecoin. Let me tell you, there will certainly be more decentralized applications to come to the Flare network in the future. The Flare Time Series Oracle will also provide processed price estimates, known as Time Series, to various F asset protocols running on the Flare network. An F asset is an asset which has been transformed into a smart contract equivalent. For each F asset to be created, they will utilize a corresponding F system. For the F system to function, it requires prices 
from the underlying asset in addition to the price of Spark. This is because to create F assets, the system needs to hold Spark tokens as collateral at a specific ratio. The current ratio is set at 2.5 the value of the underlying asset to be paid in Spark. To facilitate this collateral input, the Flare network will have agents, which are people or systems which wish to provide Spark as collateral to receive a small fee in return. Outside of the Flare network, various blockchains or distributed ledgers exist. Some of them are compatible with the Flare network and allow the asset to be converted into an F asset. Currently, this includes XRP, Litecoin, and most recently, Dogecoin. Who knows what the next asset will be? These networks also have users in addition to agents. The agents will be responsible for receiving the assets from the user to be converted into an F asset equivalent. To complete the cycle, the agents on the external networks will also be responsible for returning their assets if they were to exchange the F asset back into its original form. A detailed video explaining the creation and redemption of F assets can be found in the link above if you wish a further breakdown. But how does the Flare network, and more specifically the F protocols, monitor the movement of assets which are to be minted or redeemed? This is a job for the state connector, the final piece of the puzzle. The state connector is somewhat of a ledger monitor observing if assets have been sent to the various F systems and also to monitor the assets that have been redeemed to their users correctly. So let us summarize some of the key components which make up the Flare network. We have the Flare time series oracle, responsible for outputting price estimates in a decentralized manner. We have the data providers, working hard to calculate the most accurate price to send to the FTSO in return for a reward. We have various decentralized applications to be utilized by users on the Flare network. We have the F protocols or F systems responsible for coordinating the creation and redemption of F assets. And finally, we have the state connector monitoring the activity of external networks and reporting transactions to the F systems to ensure everything is running smoothly. So this concludes my high level interpretation of the Flare network. I hope this overview gives you a well-rounded idea of some of the key components involved. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to share it and help others benefit. If you would like to learn more about the Flare network, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next videos. With that being said, I wish you all a great day. Until next time, I'm out.